Yes, uh huh. Uh, 
Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Roy Rodriguez. Um, also, a brand new board member. Excited to be on this on this on this board. I hope that's And uh, as I mentioned, I think it was a couple months ago, a long time. I've, I've been looking for an opportunity to serve our community in some form or fashion, and um, I'm really excited about this opportunity with this board. Um, I'm really excited. Thank you. I'm Tracy Casella. I'm chair. We are in the public library advisory board. I'm a retired educator and I've been on the library board for approximately five years. Close, close to six, six months and six years. And I'm the director. And I'm Donna Campbell. I'm the library director. And I've been the director now for it was six years in August. Hi, Derek. I'm Jamie. Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. I only lived in the valley for a couple of years. But I I'm Lily Walker. I'm the assistant library director. I've been in this position since 2017, and I was lead librarian from 2010 to 2012. Hi, I'm the executive secretary here. My name is Naomi Kenya. I've been with the city for 17 years now, <laughs> going on 17 years, and I uh, enjoy my job. I love what I do, and uh, that's great. <laughs> Omar just made it clear. We have another Omar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Omar Gordon. I'm the executive services coach, and I've been here for two years now as a staff leader. Great. Uh, I also see we have uh, Dick, and he's been here for our IT support at the city level. And then uh, via Zoom, we have two members. Uh, Mary, you want to go first? Hi, uh, I'm Mary Torres and I'm the vice chair. Thank you. Frank? I'm Frank Cortazo. I am the Cameron County lay rep in that, that position for about eight years, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I'm a former elementary school teacher, retired in 2010 from Raymond ISD. But I'm originally from the Lyford area, and Sebastian specifically, and uh, I'm also a former president of the uh, Valley Bylanders Local Writers Group. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. All right, we do have a Do you have any questions? We'll move on to the minutes. We need to approve the minutes from the April 12, 2021 meeting. So everybody would take a moment to uh, just review the minutes. If you see any corrections, please let us know. We have a motion to approve the minutes. I move to be accepted. All right, we have uh, a motion. Do we have a second? I second. second. All right, the motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, then we have approved our minutes. Um, April the 12th. Uh, new business discussion and action to approve the revised circulation policy. And that is uh, the very first document was to uh, the second document in your packet. It's right behind the minutes. Uh, you want to review that for us, Donna? Okay. Um, the changes that we made primarily are to include the new items that we've, that we've added. Um, for example, we began circulating venture bags 
and they were previously not listed in our, in our circulation policy, so the new policy includes that. It also includes the library kiosk checkout, which will be going online later this summer. Um, so we needed to have some kind of a policy in place regarding the library checkout and um, the rules regarding that. Um, the rest is just kind of cleaning up language. Um, for example, instead of specifically listing overdrive services, we changed it to digital material so that it's more all encompassing of any future services that we may add. Um, the other thing is just revising um, the language as far as like how, how the fee structure is listed saying that it's in Appendix B instead of um, saying that it's below. So it's just basically cleaning that up a little bit. Um, so the other thing is, is we did remove um, the fee for music CDs because we no longer circulate CDs. But I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you have about any of the changes. They're, they're either in red or they're in blue, um, but it's pretty obvious that they only make changes because we always use for um, change. Okay. Any discussion about the changes or removal? Uh, seeing that, uh, do we have a motion to approve the revised circulation policy? I still move. All right. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? All right. We have a second. Been, the motion has been made and it's been seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those same aye. time. All right. It's been approved. We've approved the revised circulation policy. Next up is discussion and action to approve a revised library card policy. And that is uh, behind the next divider in your packet. Tell me when you share the information. Um, the only real change to this document is that we're adding language when it comes to e-cards. Um, in the past, we've only, we've only just started dabbling in e-cards. And what an e-card is, is it's a digital only card. So they, it's somebody that they have access to our e-books in our databases, but they do not have access to our physical material. And the big difference is um, somebody with an e-card can apply for it now digitally. So they fill out the, the application digitally, email it with a copy of their driver's license, and then we give them a, a digital card. If they want to upgrade to a regular card, all they have to do is come in and show us proof of address. And then it's just a matter of just changing and filling the computer. Um, but we began doing this pretty frequently during, you know, during the last year because people were needing more access to our digital cards. And this kind of gave, gave them the ability to check out books without having to come in and worry about their health. Do we have any discussion on the revised library card policy? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve the revised library card policy? We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion. It has been seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion is approved. Next step is discussion and action to approve the Lizette list. And that is in your packet behind the next divider. So I'm going to share the, the Lizette list. Okay. Uh, what the Lizette list is, um, <clears throat> some time ago, a, a woman named Margaret Lizette left us some funds in her will. And they're the, the, it, it's a trust fund that's overseen by, I think, Bank of America as the trustee. And every quarter, we're given dividends to purchase books of lasting value. So if these are books that um, should be in our collection semi-long-term, 
And so we try to select materials that we think, you know, aren't going to be outdated within a year or two. So, for example, we would not buy Office 2010 because that's going to be outdated within a year or two because they're going to come out with a new version of it. So the, the material, it should be something that the information is not going to change over time. Um, we do purchase both adult and youth books. This, and we try to usually rotate through like one quarter we may do youth, one quarter we may do adult. Um, so this this quarter we're using the funds for the adult the adult section. So we have to take a minute and we do that the title in the list and then uh, I'll open it for discussion. Much better than like 
our, our PDF document. I'm happy to answer any questions about the kiosk and the old to train yeah. me, but well, yeah, why don't you go ahead and just tell, tell us a little bit about the benefit of everyone so just share with us a little bit about the kiosk. Uh, what the, the kiosk was is going to be paid for through the border city grant and the purpose of the border city grant is to expand library services to the area that we're not currently in. Um, and the amount was up to four hundred thousand. That's correct. And that's what we received was this four hundred thousand dollars, and it paid for the kiosk, um, a lot of materials for the kiosk. The kiosk holds about three hundred and forty items. Yes, three hundred and forty items, and then so we purchased materials to be able to rotate through. The plan is to have um, the majority of them. Well, probably about half of them as youth services, as children's books, about a quarter of teen books, and about a quarter of adult books. And they'll be primarily bestsellers and um, kind of the, the high circulating titles, the new hot titles that people want to want to read. And we'll circulate them through the kiosk for a while, and then those will go into the general collection. Um, and the grant is, is covering all of that plus a library table. So we're in the purchase of, or we're in the process of purchasing an SUV that staff can, can take to go and refill the house. Uh, but th this is going to be wrapped up, we think, the end of July, beginning of August. Everything should be installed and set up and ready to go. And is there an option to request the title? Yes. Yes. Um, there is a way that it's going to have um, two places that they can access the library catalog, and they can check out additional material, and they can also check out or they can request books that are at the main branch and pick them up in the library. Okay. Away. 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 Right. As long as it takes to for staff members to pull it, probably like a day. Exactly. What is that? What's the time frame? What's the time frame to deliver the library? The, it should be delivered the July 29th is the date that they gave us for the delivery date of the canopy. The kiosk is going to arrive sooner than that. They haven't given us a date yet because they're waiting to hear from parks on when they're going to finish the uh, concrete pad. And parks was going to do the concrete pad last week and then it rained. But it's been raining. And, um, and it, 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 once it arrives, we'll see what it's called. Once it arrives, <laughs> then the contractors will sell it. Oh, okay. The city is responsible for the concrete pad and running the electrical. So it has its own installer. Yes. Okay, so then you would like us to, to decide, decide which design. Well, they're both very nice. Let me start off by saying that. I like both of them. I think it's going to the children's area. It's right in front of all the kids right now. I personally, I like both of them. I think they're both really good. I, I like the I like the flowers. I like the icons inside the flowers. But the first one with the butterfly and the lady touching on the side, I think they're more eye-catching. And I mean, to me, that to me that looks more of an attention getter. Um, it seems to be more child focused. But I mean, you're gonna have it's gonna have times for everybody in there. And so you do want to appeal to everyone. And just so you're aware, like the kiosk is going to face the street. The canopy side is going to be most visible from the park. Okay. And the canopy, I'm guessing, just goes over 
the part where you're actually going to do your selection? Right. So the canopy actually goes all the way around it. Okay. And then these are, this is an opening where it's like the, the front part. So it, it's almost it's semi fully enclosed. And then there will be like the, the opening to go to go in. So do you go inside of it? Yeah, so it, it'll be protected from that. I see. Well, as protected as you can get. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but there is some protection. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was very nice. I know. I, I really do like both of them. You have a preference, Mary? Oh, I think I like the butterfly. I'm going to butterfly. Butterfly. Okay. All right. And this slide. Is there a playground park? I think there's a lake park. So it ties into. Oh, I did. Yeah. I, I, they're both really nice. It seems like we're leaning towards the lake. All right. So. Butterfly Okay. Butterfly Lake. Butterfly Lake. All right. Then do we have a, a motion to approve the recommendation of the Butterfly Lake? Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a good step. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Good. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. That recommendation has been approved. And then next up, we have a presentation of summer music. Okay. So for this summer. So for this summer, um, we, we planned out a lot of things. We wanted to make programs as easily accessible for families who are still preparing to stay home. So everything will have a virtual option except for using a drop in craft dance Saturday. Um, we kind of split our activities the drop in craft Yeah, so the drop in craft day, we will just getting out of the craft materials into two programs that will happen in the summer. And um, for two hours on the Lake and Music Saturday, teams will be able to drop in and, and sit down and work on a craft, or they'll be able to uh, take a little bag and go home and work on a craft at um, So we kind of split our approach between kids and the teens for how we were designing the program for the summer. Um, for the teens, uh, up until mid June, everything is going to stay virtual. After mid to late June, uh, you'll see all of the programs get the word hybrid added. And so we decided at that point, that's about when um, the teams who have decided to get vaccinated will be considered fully vaccinated. And so um, they'll still have the option to come to all the programs virtually by like Zoom, uh, but they can also join in person. So we'll we'll hook up the Zoom meeting in the team room basically. So then the teams who feel you know want, like they want to come in here can do so. The teams who want to stay home but still want to participate can also do that. Um, the children's programs will stay mostly virtual for now, um, just because they're in an age group that they can't be vaccinated yet, and, and we want to make sure we're you know, doing what we can to protect everybody while still providing some awesome programs and services. One exception you'll see on Fridays, we have a hybrid Friday afternoon fun. We have been for a while uh, hosting like a craft or activity video on Fridays called Friday afternoon fun. We're going to continue to do the, the crafts. We've designed all the ones for the summer to do simple items that you probably already have at home for crafting, like, you know, construction paper and crayons and things like that. Um, families will also have the option many times during the day on Fridays, they can stop by the children's desk and pick up um, like the, the little pieces of paper and also like crayons and scissors and stuff and sit at one of our tables here and work on it or just take the, um, the paper pieces home and do your own crafts and crafts and um, In addition to all these really great programs, we are uh, doing like uh, 
you know, the, the traditional summer reading ones where you can track how much reading you're doing. We're doing that virtually again this year. Um, so on the next page, you'll see um, this is a flyer that we have been uh, handing out. Um, families can either use an app or just go on a web browser to log their reading. It's a, a really easy to use program. Um, the parents will sign up for one account for the family, one password to remember, thank goodness. <laughs> and then each child will get their own profile under that. So they can log their reading, they'll earn some little prizes along the way, like stickers and pencils and bookmarks and that sort of thing. And they'll also earn some tickets into a raffle. We've got uh, like a grand prize or a raffle um, for the different age groups there. Um, there's also um, some uh, fun features in there. The kids can write reviews of the books they're reading. And so we have a plan this summer. We will periodically go in there, grab some of the reviews the kids have written, um, like put them on a little index card size paper and set them up with the book. Um, sort of like things that you have seen at bookstores previously, um, you know, recommended by the staff or community recommendations out there. We're kind of getting to do the same thing, but making the recommendations right for the parents. So that will be a lot of fun. And we are also going to have three creative expression events. They're all going to be done virtually, but these are uh, uh, like a little bigger than a, a regular program. And so first up is going to be the virtual summer art show. We've had a few virtual art shows this past year. They have been great successes. Um, a lot of people in the community have been having a lot of fun. So we have here, uh, it's, it's all the same rules as before, except um, we are limiting the um, participants to one piece of art to be displayed um, this time around. Um, everybody who participates will be entered into a raffle for um, art supplies instead of like a, a judge uh, competition. It's just a raffle. Uh, that way it's a little easier for um, everybody to feel you know, good, good about whoever's winning when you know, you've got a four-year-old up against a 16-year-old or whatever. <laughs> Um, the next month we'll be having is a new one. I didn't get the uh, the the like the entry form and the response form. Basically, look just like this. They just have different features. Like this has paint for art. Uh, the distribution one will have like a pencil. Um, it's a pretty basic idea, except instead of art, folks will be writing their own short story or picture book and submitting um, submitting like some information about that to us. And then later in July, we'll be having another virtual science fair. The kids will do a science project on their own, and they'll submit a little video for the information to us. For all three of these, we'll compile all the submissions into a slideshow that we'll put up on our social media. Um, and we'll have the same sort of raffle for each one for the um, writer's exposition. We'll have uh, like notebooks and pencils that are being raffled off. And for the science fair, we'll be having uh, like little science. No, re no report. No report. Corresponding secretary, that position is currently vacant. And moving on to our library business reports, start off with our library director, Donna. Um, that was the, it, um, you may have heard or may know that Dave Canales has moved on. He was, uh, he's accepted a position in Corpus Christi um, for bigger, better things. And We've hired a, a new a new person in his position, Dave, if, for the new people. He was our library associate that was in charge of the teen program, um, which has, has become a really important part of our youth services program. And they're the person that they really help, help get our teens engaged and give them a sense of ownership in our library. Um, and we've hired Destiny Oh, she's probably completely 
so we're really excited about her. She's um, she worked in youth services at the Brownsville Library, and she's a week to our senior graduates. So we're hoping that you know, she keeps the library. He said, "Call me the library." <laughs> Um, 
um, once a rental is reserved, it, it's 30 days in advance. So actual people being here for July 1st. Have other cities still be starting to do that? Yes, all city departments. Okay, so all city departments have started rental yes. reservations yes. June 1st. Okay. Um, I'll let Molly talk about the story walk for this time and Aaron talk about the junior reserve. Okay. So the story walk ribbon cutting is scheduled for Saturday, July 10th at 10 a.m. Um, the story walk project is something that we're working with the um, South Texas Winter Street Coalition and um, the City Parks Department to implement is um, the way that it's set up is that we'll have uh, the picture, the pages of a storybook printed on large sheets of metal, and those will be um, installed along the trail at City Lake. And so families can walk the trail and read the book together while enjoying the outdoors. And, um, so the South Texas Literacy Coalition is funding the actual like printing of those metal sheets. Um, and the city is providing the space in which you can install it. And um, our role in it is that we're going to do a lot with the promoting it and uh, he's assisted them in selecting the book. And Erin has plans for how she's going to use it in part of her story time. Um, but the idea is that we're really encouraging family together time, outdoor activity and literacy. Um, and hopefully like that, story walk will be a bridge for bringing families to see the, the book, then they can also then come into the library to check out the book. Um, so we're pretty excited about having the story walk uh, opened up and uh, the South Texas Literacy Coalition is currently looking for uh, sponsors for it. This would be one of the ways that they need to um, help support their work in uh, providing books and literacy resources for Harlingen children and, um, and in other areas too. So they're also going to provide a book giveaway in conjunction with the ribbon cutting on that Saturday. So Saturday, July 10th. Right. Starts at 10 o'clock, yes. I love that idea. I think that's just how long will it be up? Two months. Two months. We'll have it here, and then they're going to take it to another park in the Rio Grande Valley. Okay, and so they'll yeah. get the same book and the same supply. It'll be the they're same. They're just starting book. to do it. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Great. That's so cool. <laughs> so we've invited the city council and the mayor and um, the parks board and the South Texas Literacy Coalition board to come out for the ribbon cutting and it'd be great if the library board could come with too. Absolutely. Good news. I'm in the right place. <laughs> Can you see me? 
it's like a plastic uh, beach tote. It's really great. Uh, same material that the current adventure bags are. It's really easy to clean. Um, you see this one here is the weather one. So inside we have, uh, you know, a, a storybook, thunder truck, and then you have like a nonfiction book to learn about what is the weather. And then we also have uh, little pieces that clip together for a weather station. Um, there's like a, you know, like a rain collector and a weather vane. And then we also have, it's kind of like a blender, but uh, it makes a tornado. Um, you fill it up with water and turn it on, it makes a tornado. And um, so we have these uh, dinosaurs, uh, rainbows, uh, all kinds of different things. Those ones have uh, color trees. What would be the recommended age range for these? Yeah, we designed them for elementary. Oh. Which one was the one that had the That would be the robot kid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hear me? Yes. Hello? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the CCLS uh, met, I believe, back in April. Uh, the main topic of the meeting was the memorandum of understanding that came up in the previous meeting. The MOU basically it's a document that was presented to the CCLS. It originated in Brownsville at the city management during a recent audit of the city's expenditures. And it was proposed that that same document be in place for use by the CCLS and its member city. The purpose of the MOU is for the city to show compliance, accountability, and to be used as a receipt of expenditures during audits, how money is spent, received, and so on. And uh, basically it's just a, a document, uh, and the uh, instrument of documentation. Uh, CCLS at, the me at this last meeting tabled the MOU to study it further and suggested it, one suggestion was that it be used by Brownsville and the other county libraries that to use as needed, but it, uh, C uh, CCLS budget committee was established to meet and discuss it further, which uh, my knowledge, I don't know if the, the, that meeting has taken place yet or not but uh, we're more than likely going to hear about the, uh, about that uh, the next meeting sometime this summer. Uh, the county libraries at the time all were open at a limited capacity except for Port Isabel. Uh, the, this year's TLA annual conference was held virtually during April 22nd, 24th and uh, none of the libraries attended. And the effort is still being made to get a CCLS credit card. So uh, we're still working on that. Uh, as far as the, the Valley Byliners, uh, the group has been meeting twice monthly. The, uh, 
marketing meetings on the last Saturday of the month, uh, the one on the 24th of April, featured a uh, former Byliners member and DJ Mario Munoz. Uh, he he uh, had a very, very good presentation on aspects of reading one's writings aloud using audio equipment. He provided some strategies such as, such as spoken delivery, translating one from one's imagination, creating an audio production platform. And uh, he guided one of the members through an audio audacity program that he used, he used as a DJ in adjusting and modifying one's voice in order to read something aloud. And uh, I had a family emergency that day, so I only caught a, a little bit of that meeting, but uh, it is something that the group is considering for its new anthology, which is still in the planning stages, uh, possibility of having also an audible version. Uh, the marketing meeting for Saturday, the 22nd of May was canceled. And then we had a regular meeting on the second Saturday, which was the last one was May the 8th. And uh, that one, we had a uh, Valley Byliners member, Marcus Esperanza, presenting on Valley uh, South Texas regionalism. And uh, he discussed a lot of very good information on uh, aspects pertaining to a specific area, in a specific time period, such as give an example like Mark Twain's classic Huxton novel, which settings and uh, dialects pertain to the Mississippi River of the 1800s, to all the areas around it. We gave an overview of uh, some of the culture and languages, uh, the influence in the area of the Rio Grande Valley, such as American realism and Mexican realism, and gave a brief history of the Gregorio Cortez incident that occurred uh, in, uh, in Texas, in which a Mexican man was pursued by the Texas Rangers due to a shooting uh, resulting from a uh, misinterpretation of language, which uh, there's a movie, I believe, on that uh, that came out back in the 80s. And he also cited uh, examples of differences between code switching and code meshing in the Spanish and English languages. And uh, there is our next meeting, I think, will be this Saturday. I have no idea what the program is going to be. I should be able to find out tomorrow. There's going to be a board meeting held on Zoom. So. We should find out more about that one. And Poetry Night uh, has been going well. And I believe I've, the word is that we're going to resume in-person meetings next month in July. So something to look forward to. And that's all I've got. Thanks. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Your audio was a little low for me, but hopefully that was just me. <laughs> and we got you on that. On our I'll YouTube. send you made my uh, well, report like I always do. So, you know, that's the typos. You'll get my report. Hopefully, that's just me. All right. Um, next up is Friends of the Library representative. Lynn, I know I saw her. Was she not there? I think she's Friends of the Library. Well, she, she didn't do anything today, but she just wanted me to go ahead and do part two, guys. I see Friends Bookstore has started to, it opened up and started to do a little bit of revenue coming in. Oh, good. It started to pick up already. So, yes, it's fully open. So, she wanted me to let you guys know that you guys are the ones who went there for two books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the friend's uh, bookstore is open and ready for me. Okay. <laughs> is she taking donations yet? Yes. Um, the, the good thing is, during this time, people with uh, in our donation, uh, the friend's donation box, they had been picking up donations from no the original, the, the bookstore was closed. They were getting pretty good. Uh, Donations in the friends box, but they're more than welcome to give donations. So are we accepting donations? Both donations, not at the moment. Oh, uh, we're still um, we don't really have room at the moment. Okay. But from all the reading that we did for the uh, for the uh, project, yeah, the RFID right. project. So at the moment, we're not. So we have like a you know we kind of have like an estimated time as to when donations will be accepted again. I think that are safe. Yes, but we're just waiting on space. As soon as the, the more we sell in the first book, I think more about the group will we'll start having. It's going to be dependent on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, but it should, now that it's open again, it should be yeah. turn it and pick up. Okay. So we had a lot of people who did, they were anxious to get the And what was so neat about it, there's a bunch of credit for successful purpose. It was close, they were donated. Donation box. Uh, so, people were thinking maybe by donating, donating enough yeah. for that. 
it uh, it really encouraged people that when it opened up, there was people wanting to go in there. So that was great. So yeah, that everyone in. <laughs> that was good. All right. Um, our next two reports are our uh, genealogy society report. Uh, Anne is not with us. Mary, are you prepared to do both of those for us? Uh, I'll report on both uh, societies. The uh, Tipitex Genealogical Society has not really been active for a, about a year. The uh, president, Susan Francis, wishes to thank the library for the many services and amenities that they have extended to TOTGS over the years. The uh, society has been in business for 59 years, February. And they started with the library when it was on Madison Street. They moved to uh, Tyler and then over to the, uh, the current address. And uh, we're still publishing a quarterly journal and looking forward to uh, starting programs again as soon as uh, we get the go ahead. Okay, uh, the Rio Grande Valley Hispanic Genealogical Society uh, is working on its 2021 annual journal and uh, we're busy planning the 41st annual state Hispanic Genealogical and Historical Conference, October 14th through 16th, 2021. It's going to be an in-person conference at South Padre Island uh, Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, we held our first public meeting since February, 2020 at the uh, museum on uh, May 16th. Manuel Hinojosa from Brownsville was our speaker. We have a program scheduled for June 27th by Hector Gutierrez, who's going to talk about the history of the Bayi family. And uh, that's about it. Thank you, Mary. All right, and next up, our student representative reports. We do not have either one of them with us today. And so we will move on to our next meeting, and that one is to be determined. Um, our next regularly scheduled board meeting falls on the um, 4th of July holiday. And so um, we won't be having it at our regularly scheduled uh, date and time, but we'll just put that one to be determined. It, it's quite possible we may just get back on our regular schedule in August, and then something comes up that we need to meet before at some point